that's one of the bonus questions, but we're going to do addition now. Just checking in case it's actually one of the questions. No, I've got a shake in the heads. I have printed out the one with all the questions on. What are the questions for this week? Numbers? 3, 7, and 9, and 8, 6, and 9. 3, 7, and 9. Not 3, 5, and 7. Okay, this is question 5. I just momentary panic. Now, well, if this is, if this is the, a question, then it'll, it'll be an advantage to come into lecture. Okay. <coughs> for all x, y, and z, so for any three numbers, x plus y plus z equals x plus y plus z. And the brackets make it interesting. Let's actually scroll it up just for a moment so you guys can see it better. So if we have y and z added together first and then added to x, it's the same as adding x and y together and then adding z to it. And that's different from subtraction or division or anything like that, right? Order matters for those. And order matters in Robertson's arithmetic. With induction, order doesn't matter for addition, is what I'm claiming. And you guys can find out whether it matters for multiplication yourselves. In E9. Can we make sort of brackets around? What an extra header bracket? Was that necessary at all? Um, I don't think you needed that set. I don't think you needed this set. I put them both in buckets. That lay out one to wind you up. I think the one that's useful is this. The other ones might be like clear syntactic sugar. You might need it for a computer, but the humans probably don't. Be humans as opposed to you. Don't need it for reading stuff. Okay. You put in just a number of brackets. Now, when you've got multiple quantifiers, the usual strategy, and it's fairly reliable, so trust me as a, as a hint, you've got multiple quantifiers, it's almost always only the, the inner one, which means induction. The upper ones are normally called, it's normally only the inner one. As I said earlier, it's not guaranteed, but in this course, it's you know, the first hour, I'm not deliberately mean. So we're just going to do a universal introduction, the usual sort of universal introduction, here, by getting rid of our x's, and we'll change those to a's. a plus x plus a plus y plus z equals a plus y plus z. And that brackets around the equals just to make people feel better. And probably need to be formally correct. Also, we'll do a universal introduction on that. So we're going to change this to, a, to an arbitrary number, the y will just be whatever, they'll be b's, and the inner one is usually where the induction happens. So now we're going to do our induction rule, so from a statement about zero in our other reasoning block to induction, so line six is going to do the bottom of the rule, which is a plus B plus S of N equals A plus B plus S of N. We're going to try to prove that from Oops. outside, sorry. From line five. Line five says A plus C plus N. So the Z is being at N at the top, but works for N, we're going to show it works. What has happened with my alignment? A plus B plus N is equal to A plus B plus N. We're going to assume it works for N, we're going to show it works for one more. So that's the, um, the hard, the recursive part of it. We also need to show it works for zero. So line four, we're going to show A plus B plus zero is equal to A plus B plus zero. So it works for four, we've got a place to start. If it works for zero, then you say if it works for zero, it works for one, if it works for one, it works for two, if it works for two, it works for three, if it works for three, it works for seventeen. So we can just loop around forever with that reason. And we don't need to loop, the induction rule says I will do the looping for you, you've got everything that you need, I will loop till it is finished, and it will finish. If you're doing it for a million, you just need a million loops. 
And the rest of it is no need for induction. You guys can do your Robertson's arithmetic from last week on that. And um, I will do that with you. So here, this is an identity, so this will be identity introduction. Assumption, identity assumption, that will be number seven. A plus B, now, oops, <coughs> S of N. We're trying to prove A plus B plus S of N. We're trying to prove from this that this is the same object. Well, the only thing we can do here, there's no zero to move on, there's only one S. We'll take this S and move it outside this bracket. A plus S of B plus N by K4. <coughs> now we can't quite use either of these rules here. This doesn't, doesn't match either of these. But we can now use this S and move it out one more layer. A plus S of something, that's S of A plus that something. So Q4 again. And now we've got A plus B plus N, which is this one here. We can use our assumption to swap it to here, and now we have S of A plus B plus N by our line 5. And now we'll move the S back in again to the N and give us here what we were looking for. So that's our proof of the loopy part. Now we just need to prove the very top line, line 4, which is the non loopy part. You're probably pretty confident that A plus B plus zero is going to be A plus B plus zero. You can probably see how that's going to go. We're going to shrink the zero up, loop them together, add them together, put the zero back on the outside again. So I will just scroll down. A plus B plus zero is A plus B, which is A plus B plus zero. Or one big reasoning block. I guess that's line eight. And this is true by line eight, I can see introduction. Q3, Q3, and scroll to the left. We are done. So it was a big messy proof. But the only bit of reasoning we needed to do was in here, which wasn't too bad, and even simpler reasoning at the top. The induction rules like um, by implication rule, by introduction, or like disjunction elimination, gives you a whole bunch of structure. And you've got a much more problem to work with afterwards. So give you the structure, then you're just using like cue rules here and cue rules at the top to sort it. So if you've got the cue rules sorted, the induction breaks the problem down the need to use the cue rules. So that's the name of the game. And now the good news is, we can be loose with brackets. Not during proofs, of course, that would be wrong, but now we can be loose with brackets. And if you want to swap brackets around, you need to throw these 15 lines of proof.